Hi everyone. This work is about the probable security of a novel block cipher paradigm named the SP network with partial nonlinear layers. The work is cooperated with Francois, Weijia, Xiao, and Yu. As mentioned, we studied a novel block cipher structure named SP network with partial nonlinear layers that is obtained by removing a part of the S boxes in a normal SP network as shown in this picture. For this structure, we provide the first systematic probable security treatments, prove security against the CCA attacks, and prove security against the impossible differential attacks. We also show tight bounds on the number of active S boxes in differential trails and provide principled linear layers that can help achieve this tight bounds. This means the paradigm is sound or even advantageous in a well-defined sense. To see the results, let's first talk about some background. So consider the problem of designing a block cipher. We have two famous approaches. The first is the FASTO network and its generalizations. See this picture. In every round of such structures, only a part of the intermediate state will go through the will go through the nonlinear round function and this part is kept in the output. A well-known instance is, of course, the data encryption standard. The second is the SP network. See this picture. In this structure, in every round, the entire input is divided into a number of chunks, and every chunk goes into a nonlinear S box. The outputs of the S boxes are then merged with a linear diffusion layer T. An important example is the advanced encryption standard and the randomly accepted ISO standards such as Skinny and uh, Deoxys. This work is to consider an exception lying between the two approaches. See this picture. As far as we know, the motivation to use this structure was due to side channel masking. In detail, to protect the implementation of a block cipher against the power analysis and other side channel attacks, one will use secret sharing based techniques, dividing the secret keys and the intermediate states into shares and operate on these shares with the hope that every share leaks independently and this could reduce the total amount of side channel information leakages. Because the AND action is nonlinear with respect to XOR, performing AND actions on these shares are difficult and more expensive. It is thus natural to seek for new block ciphers with less AND actions as possible. The first attempt was made at Chess 2013, providing a block cipher named Zorro. The central idea is to reshape the AES. So concretely in the AES, the substitution layer has 16 parallel applications of an 8-bit S-box. Zorro replaces the S-box with a lighter one and reduces the number of AND gates in every S-box evaluation. But more importantly, Zorro only keeps uh, four S-boxes in every substitution step and removes the other three quarters, and this reduces the, the security of the round function. To compensate for this weaker round function, Zorro increases the number of rounds from 10 in the AES to 12 in Zorro. So the total number of S-box evaluations in the whole encryption is reduced from 160 in AES to 40, 48 in Zorro. And as mentioned, every S-box is lighter than AES uh, as well. So this significantly reduces the total cost of masking. This novel block cipher structure is called a SP network with partial nonlinear layers in subsequent works or partial SP networks for simplicity. Besides mark scheme, block ciphers evaluated in the MPC engine also desire less and actions. Uh, this scenario is even more extreme because uh, exhaust actions can be evaluated locally in the MPC engine, while AND actions incur communication overheads, and the communication is the current bottleneck of MPC. So subsequent designs that follow this paradigm, uh, including low MC, high this paradigm, and the malicious for the MPC block ciphers. So for the remaining, let's recall the idea for clearness. 
uh, given a normal SP network, assume that the number of chunks here is W. For example, in this picture, we have four chunks. And we remove a number of S boxes to obtain the partial SP network structure. And we call the number of remaining S boxes divided by W, the rate of the structure. For example, in this picture, we have four chunks, but only two of them go through the S box. So the rate is two divided by four or one divided by two. The normal SPN is a special case of such partial SP network with rate one. Our community has conjectured several ad conjectured advantages of the partial SP networks. So for example, obviously one would think that to achieve the same level of security, PSPNs consume less nonlinear actions than normal SPNs. Uh, of course, this is a very motivation of using this structure. The bar on conjecture, conjecture that by trading stronger linear layers with some S boxes, PSPNs can achieve more security against the structural attacks such as impossible and uh, differential and uh, integral. We will study the models of partial SP networks and try to shed some lights on these questions. Let's now see our results. We prove CCA security for partial SP networks with rate 1 divided by 2 and the security against the impossible differential attacks for 4 runs when the rate is at least 3 quarters. Finally, we provide the first principle the linear layers. This ensures a tight number of active S boxes in differentials. So let's now see the results one by one. We first recall the setting for CCA security. In this setting, a distinguisher has two oracles. The right oracle is the underlying S boxes, uh, modeled as public random permutations. In the real world, the left oracle is the partial ST network using a random key. In the ideal world, the left oracle is a WN bit wide random permutation, and the distinguisher has to tell about the two words. And its advantage is defined in this expression. And we first show a chosen plan text differential enumeration attack on three rounds. Even if the S boxes and the linear transformations in the three rounds are independent, the idea is as follows. Uh, let's consider the linear layer T1 in the first round. Since only a half of the chunks have S boxes, it is always possible to derive a differential on T1 with input and output differences of this form. Uh, the right half of the input difference has no active S box, while the right half of the output difference has only one active S box, and the difference is delta. So after this output difference propagate along the second S box layer, the left uh, half is invariant since there is no S box, and the right half has at most the two to n possibilities here. So after the difference further propagate along the second linear layer t T2, the left half here has at most the two to n possibilities as well, and these possibilities can be computed and uh, kept. So by this, we query the construction oracle with a pair of plan taxes with input difference delta con 1 connect concatenated with zeros and check if the left half of the output difference is in the 2 to n possibilities that we can predict it. The time complexity is 2 to n, but the query complexity is just 2, so they attacked. Under the assumption that first, uh, all the S box evaluations in the network use the same S box S, and S is an n bit public random implementation. And second, the same linear transformations T is used in the five rounds, and T is uh, a linear transformation slightly stronger than an MDS permutation. And finally, the first and the final key addition are using two uniformly distributed keys k0 and k5. So with these assumptions and assume that distinguisher makes qc queries to the left construction oracle and qs queries to the right s box oracle, we prove such a security bound. This type of birthday bound is common in similar probable security treatments. 
Probable CCS security bound is limited by the size of the random primitives in use, so, which is very small in our context. So, for example, the AS parameters have n equals 8, and uh, our bound implies security up to only 2 to 4 queries. This is, of course, of no practical meaning. But the interesting point is that now we see uh, the partial SP network can be proved secure in the same model as the normal SP network and the generalized FASO networks. So we can have a fair comparison about their advantages or disadvantages. So in particular, to achieve CCA security, the PSPN network uses the rate of 1 divided by 2 and 5 runs. So it is in total 5 W divided by 2 S boxes. Uh, to achieve the same result, the normal SPN will use three runs and thus it use three WS boxes, which is more. So, in some sense, we confirm the conjecture that PSPN indeed consumes less non-linearity for security in a formal sense. But of course, the interpretation should be considered in caution. Uh, we indeed prove the, the advantage, but the model we use may be a bit debatable. We now see the second result. Uh, we also begin with the setting. With small random primitives, uh, we cannot prove good security bounds for general adversaries, as we discussed. So another approach is to prove security against certain types of attacks. In this respect, Sun et al. proposed a model to prove security against impossible differential attacks. It assumes any differential with non-zero input and output differences is possible on the S-Box. So this eliminates the details of the S-Box and uh, greatly simplifies the analysis and enables the security proofs against the impossible differential. So Sun et al. called block ciphers with such idealized S-Box as block cipher structures and call random analysis structural analysis. In this setting, they were able to establish probable impossible differential security for several structures. Our result should be interpreted as follows. Uh, there is no four-round impossible differential distinguisher when the rate exceeds three quarters, unless the details of the components in the block ciphers are considered. This positive result is better than the analog on AES like SPNs because the later needs five rounds uh, and because it's the later uses a linear layer that is much weaker than MDS. So the result means it indeed makes sense to trade the stronger linear layers with S boxes, and the structural security may be improved. For our last result, we consider sparse PSPNs with rate much smaller than 1 divided by 2. This sort of uh, parameter is indeed used in low MC and HADIS. For simplicity, we assume the reciprocal of R is an integral row. For example, in this figure, uh, we have 12 chunks, but only two have S boxes. So its rate is 1 divided by 6, and the reciprocal rho equals 6. A folklore here is that uh, there always exists rho minus 1 round differential trails with probability 1, uh, because the trail could just avoid to have active S box in the row rounds. For example, this one, uh, this example has five round differential trail with probability one. Then the question is how to design the linear layers to ensure a security lower bound. Uh, this, there was no obvious answer, and uh, as a consequence, low MC used the distinct pseudo random linear permutations in the rounds. To address this question, uh, our idea is actually very simple. Let's recall the idea of using MDS transformation to ensure optimal differential security in two rounds. Uh, in two rounds, the linear transformation T is designed to such that uh, every one, every two round, every one round differential delta one to delta two yields a Q a code word of an MDS code. Then the MDS property would ensure a lower bound on the weight of the code word. And this later becomes a lower bound on the number of active S boxes in the one round differential. We generalize this idea to the PSPN with very small rate. Uh, 
a row round different row trail could have zero active S box, but in this case, the row differences delta one to delta row will yield a code word of a MDS code with long code words. Then the MDS property uh, would ensure a lower bound on the number of S active S boxes in the row rounds. Then by an analysis uh, using combined matrix, uh, this would ensure at least one active S box in every row round differential, and uh, which is tight. So with this idea, we construct an MDS code and use the generalization, the generation matrix to have row minus one distinct linear transformations, and then we can use the row minus one transformations for the rate R PSPN. While distinct rounds still have to use distinct linear transformations, uh, we have a clear underlying mathematical principle compared with the choices. Uh, so with this idea, we construct an MDS code and use the generation matrix to have row minus one distinct linear transformations. We can then use these transformations for the rate RPSPN. While distinct rounds still have to use distinct linear transformations, now we have a clear underlying mathematical principle uh, compared with the uh, ad hoc choice in low MC. MDS codes only exist for certain parameters, and this limits the effectiveness of our approach. We thus list a number of possible combinations of parameters that our approach work. Uh, using larger S boxes means uh, injecting larger field in the code words, and MDS codes exist for more par possible parameters, as reflected by the more frequent check marks in the right columns. So by this, we advocate using large but weak S boxes in partial SPN ciphers use large S box to ensure the existence of the MDS code and the effectiveness of our approach, while the S box could be cryptographically weak to reduce implementation overhead. Such S boxes can be built by the approach of SHA-3 or using the recently proposed ARX box. Finally, we'd like to mention a trivial extension of our final result. Our linear transformations ensure at least one active S box in row rounds, and by composing this result, it ensures at least T active S boxes in every T row rounds. So while this result is trivial, it seems a useful starting point for MPC oriented block ciphers. Uh, more clearly, one could begin with an instantiation of our construction and then seek for more fine grained security analysis and refinements and this may give rise to elegant and secure PSPN ciphers. To conclude, we make the first step towards understanding the theoretical soundness of the partial SP networks, provide the first systematic probable security treatments uh, regarding different security definitions, and an approach to design the linear layers. Of course, there are a number of possibilities for future including to weaken the assumptions of security proofs against the impossible differentials, to seek for new SPRP encryption modes from the PSPN structure, and to seek for more applications of large but weak S-box methodology in concrete block ciphers. Also, one may consider the security of the four-round PSPN with rate 1 divided by 2, uh, since we were unable to find either attacks or proofs. Though we believe the most interesting point is to seek for a more persuasive theory results, justifying or dismissing the advantages of PSPNs. We prove the advantage uh, in the SPRP mode, uh, but the model is as much debatable. So for example, what about algebraic degrees? Uh, can the lower bounds on the degrees uh, justify the advantages? We hope our work could incur more such investigations. Thank you for listening, and uh, of course, comments are welcome.